Zolder in Belgium will host the finals of the 2018 NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series over the weekend of the 20th and 21st of October. The fans flock to see some wheel-to-wheel -wheel action in the finals in 2017. With double championship points available, there'll be plenty of action on track. Who will follow in the footsteps of 2017 champions Toma Ferrando and Alan Day, and who will lift the championship trophy? for the 12th and final rounds of the 2018 NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. Beautiful autumn sunshine as we visit this fantastic Belgian circuit. There are two divisions, four races over the weekend. Elite one is for pro drivers where Alan Day took up the championship lead after yesterday's race. And in Elite two, for young and amateur drivers, Ulysse Delso regains the championship lead. Well, in typical American fashion, there's great build-up to the races. The crowds are poised as well for what are going to be two great 16-lap races around this four-kilometre circuit, or two and a half miles. And remember, because it's the finals, it's double points. As ever, the crowds are pouring into Circuit Zolder. They know what to expect because it's the fourth year on the trot that Circuit Zolder has held the double points finals of the NASCAR Whelan Euro Series. The anticipation is building, but it still gives the crowd the opportunity to have a look around the circuit, the displays, the trade stands, and there's plenty to keep both children and adults busy over the course of this unbelievable weekend where we will be crowning our 2018 NASCAR Whelan Euro Series champions. Yesterday was won by the number 32 car of Florian Venturi, but Willy Busena had been leading. A drive-through penalty saw him vacate the lead of the race and head towards pit lane. So it was win number two of the year for Florian Venturi. Of course, the grid for this second race of the weekend is made up by the fastest lap times that were posted in the first race of the weekend. So it's the number 24 Chevrolet Camaro of Guillaume Dumoulin that will line up on pole position for race number two of the weekend. And alongside him is Ulysse Delso in his Toyota, the championship leader. Florian Venturi is on row number two for Go Fast Racing. And for company, he's got the number 11 PK car sport car of the Brazilian driver, Felipe Rebelo. Third row of the grid, it's 46 Justin Kuntz and 56 Mattia Dreza. Guillaume de Flandre and Kenko Mura on row number four. Maxime Pampel and Jill Linster sit there on row number five. 16 laps of NASCAR Wheeling Euro Series action. The Elite Two final race of the season. We've got champions to crown in this one. Buckle up, everybody. We're about to go green for the last time in Elite Two in 2018. Guillaume Dumarie, a great start from him. Ulysse Delso a little bit slower away. But remember, the Frenchman needs to make sure he doesn't get involved in a first corner or a first lap incident. So he's lost out to Florian Venturi, who is second in the championship and has gone through and ahead of him. But even if they stay where they were, that would not be enough for Florian Venturi. Into the gravel is number 46, Justin Kuntz, at turn number one. And that may well bring about possibly an early safety car in this one. They still continue to race. Dumarie leads the race. Florian Venturi in second place. Yuli Stelso in third place. Fourth is Felipe Rebello, and it looks as though it is possibly Guillaume de Flandre that's there in fifth position in the early stages. Remember, Guillaume de Flandre was the championship leader coming into this weekend. So, out of the wooded section, yellow flags flying and safety car boards are out as a result of Justin Kutz's car being in the gravel, but also Pierluigi Veronese is in the gravel, and there is Dietrich Seyerson, so that's both of the racing total cars out on the very first lap of the race. So, safety car out, incident cleared, we're ready to get the restart of the race back underway. It was a good initial restart for Guillaume Dumoulin, and it's a good restart for him this time through as well. Again, he's got the jump on Ulysse Delso, and it looks as though Florian Venturi, yet again, is going to be through into second place. Ulysse Delso trying to hang on to third place. Guillaume de Flandre, his main championship rival, coming into this weekend, looking to squeeze his way through. But de Flandre, with that retirement yesterday, of course, has dropped further down through the championship pecking order at this stage. Dumoulin again looking to try and build the advantage. He's only ever won one race in the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. That was at Francia Corte in Italy earlier on this season. And at his home NASCAR Grand Prix, 
he would be delighted. Plenty of support for him over the course of this weekend. Round through the Villeneuve chicane for Venturi already losing ground to the race leader, coming under pressure from Ulysse Del So, but it doesn't matter at the moment. Del So is still in the best championship position because whilst he remains in third place and Venturi is ahead of him, he would still secure the championship by five championship points. He would be on 5-0-3, Ulysse Del So, and Venturi would be on 497. And Ulysse Del So will know that. If he hasn't done the maths himself, the spotters will certainly be telling the pair of them. Up towards the Erst, turn number one. Florian Venturi still hanging on to second place. Ulysse Del So there in third place as well. There's cars queuing up behind because these two are battling so much. They're holding each other up now. As they head up towards turn number two, it is still the car of Florian Venturi, the number 32 Go Fast Racing Ford that's just ahead of the RDV competition Toyota. Chevy leads, Ford second, Toyota third, Gilles Linster raises the dust in the background, he's down towards the bottom of the top ten, the man from Luxembourg bounces over the curbs at uh, Bianchi booked, but the main pack of cars for second, third, fourth and so on, working their way through the cleaner chicane. Florian Venturi locking the brakes, the unloaded wheel through the Villeneuve chicane. He's trying hard, and for Venturi, he's got two choices here. He either has to break away from the pack that's behind him and close in on Dumery to take the lead of the race. If he were to do that, whilst Del So is there in third place, that would be sufficient for Venturi to become the champion. Or he needs to back Ulysse Del So up and keep his fingers crossed that a few cars are able to pick off Ulysse Del So, because whilst Venturi is in second, He's got to rely on Ulysse Del So dropping down to something like seventh. Because if Ulysse Del So drops down into sixth place, they'd be tied on points. You do the count back, and Ulysse Del So has had more wins over the course of this season. So the maths continually changing all of the time whilst the racing goes on. And all of the time, pulling out in the lead of the race, is Guillaume Dumoulin. Looks as though on this lap, Florian Venturi, however, has managed to gap Ulysse Del So. So there's the race leader. Here's Florian Venturi in second place. The white and black car is Ulysse Del So in third. Guillaume de Flandre, who comes into this race sitting fourth in the championship standings. He was leading, of course, remember, coming into this weekend, but that retirement yesterday cost him quite dear. And there is Felipe Ribello squabbling away with Willy Busena for fifth and sixth position. Busena currently lying third in the championship standings coming into this weekend and is going to want to try and see what he can do to try and make sure that he secures at least that position. He's only 26 points off the championship leader, Ulysse Del So. so any issues for cars as we saw yesterday for De Flandre again the whole dynamic of the championship can change lock breaks for Rebello so hard is he trying to keep Willy Busena at bay Busena looking to try and squeeze his way through on the exit of the Villeneuve chicane they go side by side through Tier Lamenbocht and it looks as though for the moment it is still the Brazilian just ahead of the Frenchman another lap about to be chalked into the book though so over the start finish line they'll go Willy Busena still looking to try and attack the Brazilian up towards Ersk we've seen it done round the outside at turn number one to get the inside for turn two but Busena at the moment is going to cut back on the exit of the corner and look to try and work his way into contention up towards turn two and he's done it yeah he goes through and ahead of the Brazilian more points gained for Willy Busena Here's another great fight, 10th, 11th and 12th places all together. The car at the back of the train is Jean-Francois Dumoulin, who is driving the Spectra Premium RDV prepared Toyota for this weekend. Regular racer in the NASCAR Pinty series over in Canada and has joined us this weekend as part of the driver exchange programme. He's rolling his sleeves up, he's getting stuck in with the red car of Nicola Risitano that sits ahead of him and at the front of the queue is number 44, which is Gilles Linster. This is a great, great fight, 10th, 11th, 12th and 13th positions by the look of things all together because at the back of the train joining in now is the number 73 Knauf car in the hands of Paul Guillaud but a little bit of damage to the front end of his car suggests that he's had a busy race so far here at Circuit Zolder for the finals, the double points finals where we will be crowning a champion at the end of this race and Jean-Francois Dumoulin is looking to try and work his way through and ahead of Nicolas Ricitano non-championship point scoring Jean-Francois this weekend but he has thoroughly enjoyed his time in the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series, and that's the fantastic thing about the NASCAR Driver Exchange programmes. It gives drivers in each one of the national and regional series the opportunity to experience what it's like. And Fred Gabion, he went over to America earlier on this year to race in Canada. We've also seen Tom Ferrando head over as well and compete in the NASCAR Pro East Championship as well. All of the time, leading the race out front. Guillaume Dumoulin continues to lead the race. Squabbles going on well and truly behind him now. Well and truly out of harm's way is he. Here comes Florian Venturi in second place. Ulysse Del So in third. Guillaume de Flandre 
in fourth place, but under pressure from the number 37 car of Willy Busena. Now they are third and fourth in the championship standings at this stage. And if Busena stays where he is, which is behind Guillaume de Flandre, they will be tied on championship points. They'll both be tied on 473 points on count back. They both had two wins apiece, so you'd go to who has finished second on more occasions. And with one second place at Hockenheim last time out, Willy Busena would hang on to third in the championship standings on count back, so by the skin of his teeth. On the final lap they are, however, up towards Balderberg box goes Guillaume Dumery. Florian Venturi looking as though he is on for second in the race, but behind him is going to be the champion for this year. Guillaume Dumery claims his second championship victory in the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. Florian Venturi is second, but the champion for 2018 finishes in third place, Ulysse Delso. And for a driver who has had his problems, he's been diagnosed with Asperger's, he's found motorsport as the way to express himself. His father ever, ever supporting Emmanuel Delso. And he is going to be a very happy man indeed, as will that man as well. Had his birthday at the start of the weekend. He's just become a father for the first time. And, of course, he's now just won his home NASCAR Grand Prix. Guillaume Dumery stands atop of the number 24 PK Car Sport team. Congratulates the champion. Let's hear from him. I can believe it. Um, uh, before the race, I was in... Uh in uh, in uh, stress and uh, but uh, I, I i was control my emotion and i was focused uh, uh, i was focused on my race uh, uh, like uh, the, the like the race in, uh, in the always in the season uh, I, I will um, uh, really thanks to my team uh, claude uh, my engineer and uh, my sponsor <laughs> <laughs> and thanks, thanks to my family because uh, uh, I, I, I was uh, I, can, I can believe it I, I don't I don't find the I'm really uh, just, uh, I'm really thanks to uh, all my fans and uh, thank you a great way to end the season here at Circuit Solder and on the championship podium for Elite 2. Yuli Stelso, Florian Venturi and Willy Boussena are your top three for 2018 in Elite 2. So the champagne flies on the podium. The champion Yuli Stelso up on the top step of the podium with his hugely, hugely proud father. He claims the win and the championship crown for 2018. Florian Venturi took a win in the Rookie Cup. He's the Rookie Cup champion for 2018. Second in the Rookie Cup was Kenko Mura. And completing the Rookie Cup podium was Nicolas Ricitano. In the Legend Trophy, it was Jerry DeVert that took yet another win and becomes the champion for the third time on the trot. Second in the Legend Trophy in the race was Mirko Schultes. And completing the Legend Trophy podium was Simone Loret. In the Lady Cup, it was a win for Carmen Boyd Schill, who claims the championship in the process. And second was Ariana Casoli. So, of course, NASCAR is a global brand, and joining us at Zolder was Vice President and Chief International Officer, Jean Stefanician. Let's gauge some thoughts as to what he thinks about the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. It's wonderful being here in Zolder. The atmosphere is tremendous. It's very reminiscent of the, what we do United States of America. There's a lot of people here. There's a lot of families. Everybody's having fun, and that's really the heart and soul of NASCAR. So it's a wonderful, wonderful event. Today's Double Points Elite One race, Alan Day came through to claim the win, his sixth of the season, but was chased hard by Belgian driver at his home NASCAR Grand Prix, Stenis Longjean, and it was Fred Gavion who finished third. Which means coming into the final race of the season, Alan Day has a 14-point lead in the championship over Fred Gavion, and then Luca Lasserre sitting there in third from Loris Hazemans, the leading junior driver, in fourth. Fastest lap yesterday means number 54 Alan Day starts from pole position today. Alongside him on the grid will be Stenis Longjean at the wheel of the number 11 PK Car Sport Chevrolet. 
The second row of the grid sees Fred Gabion line up at the wheel of his Toyota, alongside Loris Hazemans at the wheel of the Hendrix Motorsport Ford Mustang. And the third row of the grid, that's where we'll see Luca Lasserre alongside Belgian hero and race winner at this equivalent race meeting last year, number 91, Mark Goosens. So the final race of the season is ready to go at Circuit Zolder. We've got a champion to crown in Elite One and in 16 laps time, we know who it will be. Buckle up, everybody. We're about to go green for the final time this year. Great start from Alan Day, who gets the jump over Stenis Longjean on the run down towards turn one. Fred Gabion looking to try and sneak up the inside if he can. They'll nose to tail through turn number one for the lead of the race. They're side by side. The third and fourth, as by the look of things, Loris Hazemans has got himself through and ahead of the Frenchman. Fred Gabion, who drops down into fourth position. Safely through the first couple of corners, everybody is. Already Alan Day looking to try and sprint away in the lead of the race if he can. Now remember, he leads the championship by 14 points, so it's up to everybody else to see what they might be able to do. If Fred Gabion, who lies second in the championship, wants to win this championship this year. He's been twice a runner-up. He's got to win it and hope that Alan Day finishes fifth or lower. Well, for the moment, Fred Gabion is stuck down there in fourth place, and Alan Day is building daylight in the lead of the race as they head in towards the braking area for Balderberg Bogt for the first time through the right-hander up towards the kink at Jochen Rink. Ben, there is a spin and a problem for Mauro Trione. That has big implications on his hopes for the Challenger Trophy. He was lying third in the Challenger Trophy points, but it was all rather close. Kenko Muir and Dario Carzo separated by just a single point. And Trione was just five points behind them. And remember, it's double points in this race again, as it was in the first race of the weekend and as it was for the semi-finals at Hockenheim. Alan Day leads Stenis Longjean in second position. Loris Hazemans at the wheel of the number 50 Ford sitting there in third, the Toyota. Number three, the white and black car for RDV competition sitting there in fourth place. Remember, that car has already won the championship in the hands of Ulysse Del So. So Frank Viola, team manager at RDV competition, can he make it a double win, Elite One? and Elite Two. We'll wait and see. Mark Goosens has got his hands rather full at this stage. That looks as though right behind him is the flying Nicola Rocca, who really bounced over the curves at the cleaner chicane in the first race of the weekend. He's looking to try and hound the Belgian driver, Mark Goosens, who's only actually had one win in the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. That was at this equivalent race meeting last year, so 12 months since we last saw the Goose win. But Nicola Rocca has got a run on him here and he's going to squeeze his way through. I'd imagine they're heading up towards the very, very fast right-hander at uh, Bianchi Bot, and he's through. So Nicola Rocca gains the place over Mark Goosens and goes through to grab a few more championship points. Great to see Nicola back in this championship this weekend. There's the rather battered Kuhn Volta's number 24 car under pressure from Bobby Labonte, who's also got damage to the tail end of his car, the 2000 Monster Energy NASCAR champion. And elsewhere down through the order, this is Romain Inietta fighting away for Fabrizio Amata, the Italian up the inside of the Frenchman, and goes through. He's had a great weekend so far, has Fabrizio. His first weekend of racing this year in the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. Alan Day still leading the race. Traffic to be dealt with. That's the car of Mauro 308 returning to circuit racing after 23 years away. His son Giovanni has been going well in the elite club over the course of the last couple of weekends. He moves neatly out of the way, allows the race leader to pass, doesn't compromise Alan Day at all. Sensible driving from Mauro, who's a real star in the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series, a very, very likeable chap. And problems for Mark Goosens there. All of a sudden, Mark Goosens runs wide, already having lost one place to Nicola Rocca, begs the question, is there a problem for the Brax racing machine? I fear there may well be, and he may be heading towards pit lane at the end of this one. There goes number three, Fred Gabion. Remember, he has been the championship leader throughout the course of this year, the Frenchman, twice a runner-up in this series, but he has never claimed the championship title. And at the moment, if he stays where he is, he's going to be runner-up again. More lock breaks from Mauro Trioni. This time, it is Nicola Rocca looking to try and work his way through. He needs to as well, because he's got the now racing number 37, white and light blue car of Toma Ferrando right behind him. So Mauro oh, chops across, actually, the nose of Nicola Rocca there. Nicola will be able to pick his pocket. Toma Ferrando follows him through as well. So this is a good old fight that is going on between this pair. Up towards Erst, which is turn number one again, the sweeping left-hander. Toma Ferrando runs a little bit wide, raises the dust, raises the grass, dips a couple of the BF Goodrich tyres into the gravel trap. Alan Day, though, out front, leading the race, but not by that much. He's still got Stenis Longjean and Loris Hazemans not too far behind. 
And also in fourth place, Fred Gavion isn't that far away either. This is the fight for sixth and seventh place. Slight amount of damage to the front splitter of Nicola Rocca. He's coming under pressure from the 2017 Elite Two champion, Toma Ferrando. Can the Canal Ford go through? He's looking for the inside line and he's going to squeeze his way through. Yep, job done as they head through. Instead of back booked, that is position gained for Toma Ferrando. The leading four, however, back through the Villeneuve chicane and the number three RDV competition Toyota Camry of Fred Gabion, desperate to try and get himself ahead of Loris Hazemans. But all of the time, whilst Alan Day is leading, Fred Gabion will know that his championship hopes are sort of slowly evaporating in front of his eyes. Lock breaks from Stenis Longin. Can he get the car turned in? No, has the shortcut straight across the gravel at the Villeneuve chicane. Well, no harm done, no damage done, but that will have put a lot of dust and debris onto the tyres, which may well mean that he's struggling for adhesion there. The number 44 Toyota of Matthias Hauer heads down pit lane, whilst out front Alan Day now has a bit of a gap actually between himself and Stenis Longin. He's just taken a few corners to clean up the BF Goodrich tyres. Loris Hazeman's looking to try and put him under pressure. Fred Gavion not too far away. And again, lock breaks for Stenis Longin. Can he hang on to the lead of the race? Loris Hazeman's desperate to try and go through and gain an extra couple of championship points if he can. And as they head side by side up towards the cleaner chicane, Stenis Longin has the inside line and is going to be able to hang on by the skin of his teeth to the position. They leap their way over the curves. Longin still there in second place. Hazeman's in third place. Fred Gabion in fourth place. Again, the lock breaks from Stenis Longin. He's driving as hard as he possibly can, but the car at the moment isn't quite doing what it was doing in the earlier stages of the race. And all of this is allowing Alan Day to run away with the lead of the race and potentially the championship. Hazeman's up the inside of Stenis Longin. Surely he's through this time. He was very late on the brakes, Loris Hazeman's, on the way into the corner. Can he hang on to it on the way out? No, he can't. Great driving. Stenis Longin somehow, and I'm not quite sure how, is still in second place. And Loris Hazeman's is scratching his head in third place, thinking, well, where, where, where can I surely pick off second place here? Because mathematically for Loris Hazemans this could be important for the overall championship but just as to whether he might finish third or fourth subject to where Luca Lasser is in the race bouncing over the curves goes Loris Hazemans has more momentum coming out of the cleaner chicane but again good driving from Stenis Longin means he still hangs on to the place again there's a lock break for him through the Villeneuve chicane and you can see all of this these three slowing each other up it's bringing Luca Lasser back into the mix as well Hazemans got the overlap this time as they head through the right hander for the final time Time and he is indeed, yeah, up into second position, but it's not going to be enough to hoist him up through the championship order. He would still mathematically be in fourth place at this stage. Alan Day claims the win and the title in Elite One. Back-to-back -back champions in the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. Second goes the way in the race of Loris Hazemans with Stenis Longin in third and Fred Gavion in fourth place. But for Alan Day, that is back-to-back -back championships in the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. It's his seventh win of the season, his 17th of his career, which means he's only three away now from the overall record holder and the Villarino. He celebrates with some donuts down at turn number one and somewhere amongst the smoke is our champion for 2018. He heads the wrong direction back up the start finish line and is going to clamber out of the car. And is he going to stand on the roof? No, he's going to run over towards the Cal Racing team. Luca, his team engineer and spotter, will be absolutely delighted. And you can see and feel the emotion of Alan Day. A very likeable guy has just now claimed back-to-back -back championships in the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. Let's hear from the 2018 champion. I feel amazing. I feel amazing. Never failed. Never failed. Never disappoint me. The car, the team... Unbelievable, just unbelievable. I'm speechless. I came from such a difficult time during the season and we still managed to, to win so many races and keep bounce back to the lead and clinch the championship. And yeah, back to back. Amazing, just amazing. So the overall championship podium for the year at Solder. Alan Day lifts the trophy high. Fred Gabion is runner-up for the third time in the NASCAR Wheel of Euro Series and double former champion, back-to-back -back champion, Luca Lasser finishes third ultimately in the championship standings. Celebrations go on on the podium. Winning the junior trophy in the race and the championship for this year is Loris Hazemans. Second in the junior trophy in the race was Thomas Ferrando and the third driver home was Giammarco Urkeli. In the challenger trophy, Fabrizio Amata claimed top honours. 
Second in the Challenger Trophy, making his debut this weekend, was Kuten Volters. And third of the Challenger Trophy cars home was Kanko Mura, who claimed the Challenger Trophy Championship. That's all for Euro NASCAR in 2018. Join us for more in 2019.